Slim Doggy Steve here, continuing our video series on how to read a dog food label, knowing how much and what to feed your dog. With the help of Slim Doggy Jack, we are going to now begin a series of videos with some tips and ingredient analysis, specific ingredient analysis. You can see that Jack actually is a uh, student of dog food labels that can conveniently is now empty. So with respect to ingredients, the important point is that the first ingredients are the most important ingredients, generally speaking. Like with human foods, ingredients are listed based on their prominence in the recipe. So the, the, the ingredients that are at the top of the list are bigger contributors than the ingredients at the bottom of the list. And as a rule of thumb, you want to look for protein as the first ingredient in your dog food. As a second rule of thumb, and this is a, a, a long-standing rule of thumb, you, people think about the first five ingredients, which can often tell the macronutrient story. And this is true, but there's a few buts. One, you do not want to ignore other ingredients in the list because you really want to understand what you're feeding your dog and if there's some things in there that may be don't make sense. And two, with respect to this video, you want to watch for something called ingredient splitting. In a nutshell, ingredient splitting means that a lower value ingredient is split into multiple components or multiple ingredients. And by doing that, you lower it, you can potentially lower its relative spot in the list. And by lowering its relative lower spot in the list, you may also increase the relative spot of a perceived higher quality ingredient. So let me give you an example to make it a little bit more clear. This is from an actual food label. So this is the first handful of ingredients. Number one, chicken meal. Second, ground whole wheat. Then wheat flour, corn gluten meal, ground rice, rice bran, and then chicken fat, blah, blah, blah. So besides wondering why there's so much grain in this food. Let's put that aside for a second. Let's think about it and let's look at this. So wheat is actually number two and three and rice is number, what, five and six. If those weren't split up, if it was just wheat or just rice, you might actually see a label that looks like this. Wheat, number one, rice, number two, chicken meal, number three, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I don't know that that's the case. I don't have the data to compute that, but this is an example of how split ingredients can change the composition of what that label looks like. Chicken moves down from the, from, you know, the first spot to the third spot. So if all you did was looked at that first spot and said, yep, protein number one, and brought that food home, you may not be uh, happy with the result. We looked at our data set. And we wanted to take a look at grains in particular and see how common is grain splitting in the commercial dog food industry. And what we found was that approximately one third of all the dry and canned foods have two or more ingredients listed in the recipes of either rice, corn, or wheat, predominant grains. And 56% of these cases, by the way, were rice. 28% of these cases were corn and 16% were wheat. So the bottom line with this is that when you look at a label, you cannot just look at to see or look to see if a protein, a name protein is number one. You've got to look a little further to see if there's a possibility that right after that is a series of split grains or other ingredients that if they were not split might change the macro profile of your food. All right, that's it for now. We'll be back with another video. We're going to start getting into more uh, ingredients and help you sort of work your way through the lists of the massive lists of ingredients that can show up on your dog food label.